the appropriate spelling of your name? Will you say and spell it and give us your official title? Yes, it's uh, Rick Lowe. That's R-I-C-K-L-O-W-E. And I'm a detective with the Eugene Police Department Property Crime Unit. Okay. And how long have you been with the EPD? I've been here for 14 and a half years and a detective for eight and a half. Okay. So let's kind of go back to how this all initially started way back in the beginning of March. Yes, uh, March 1st, uh, there's a report of a burglary at the uh, Zany Zoo Pet Store. And during the report of that burglary, there was a uh, mention of stolen money and a primate animal, um, a uh, Gallico primate that were taken during that burglary. Uh, four days later on March 6th, um, between the night of March 5th and March 6th, report of another burglary where the remaining of the uh, money that was stored at the location ended up missing. And so then, so that happened early March, and then kind of what was the next step in that and, and how you kind of got to the next point? Um, about mid-March, uh, throughout March, I was collecting video from surrounding businesses and trying to identify any possible suspects uh, using the video surveillance systems that were close by, looking for vehicles, uh, people. And it just happened that a nearby business had a video of an uh, adult female that we didn't identify at the time as being involved at the same um, time of the burglaries when they were reported. Uh, throughout the investigation, I identified her finally and located her at an area hotel in mid-March. And during my interview with her, I was able to establish that she had, in fact, been given the primate as a gift uh, for her services, which was a prostitution. And uh, I was able to talk her into allowing me to recover the animal from her, and it was transported from Portland back to Eugene here, where it was uh, safely put into a sanctuary shortly after. So let's clarify that. So you said that she was staying at an area hotel, meaning Eugene. Uh, Springfield, yes. Springfield, okay. So then how did we get outside of town then? What do you mean? So, like, so it was in Portland? Or uh, the monkey was, so she was from Portland, the prostitute. Okay. It's pretty common for them to travel the I-5 corridor. So it just happened as she was back in town on the uh, 17th when I'd found her. So she had left on March 1st, the day of the incident, but just came back into town on the 13th until the 17th, and I just got lucky and found her, and uh, she was very cooperative. Okay, so there was another incident that happened in Lynn County. Is that directly related to this incident, or it was just with the suspect? It just happened to be with the suspect, and the same time as I was collecting the monkeys, still trying to piece together what had happened, um, trying to identify if there were al other outside parties involved, and it, it was just a matter of coincidence and probably due to the uh, the drug use that was going down. And what were those drugs? Uh, methamphetamine. Okay. Uh, and so then what's kind of, so obviously, so you have the, this business owner who's allegedly burglarized his own business, he's taking money and things like that. What is the, the, the process then in the investigation from here on? Well, from what I can tell, it's not necessarily that, um, so there were two people that were responsible for the business. So we're talking about one person, and I have no reason to believe that the second person had any idea really what was going on here. So, and it just happened that that second employee was the one that had reported the burglaries and such. So it could just be a case of two partners not sharing um, what, in fact, is going on and allowing it to get to the, the steps that it got to. So I'm not saying that the person that reported the burglaries was, in fact, wrong. It's just they didn't have the whole side of the story. And so, you know, by the beginning of April, it all come, had come together, um, had what had happened. And unfortunately, investigation into the missing money is still uh, ongoing. And when you took the suspect into custody, that was today, correct? Uh, yesterday. Yesterday. Um, where d did that happen, and, and how did that go about? Uh, I just happened to go out and look for him. Um, I kind of had given him a heads up that I was going to be doing that soon, um, just out of respect for the other people involved with the business and moving and rebuilding what they were doing. So I'd, I've actually been waiting for about three weeks before I did that. So yesterday I just chose to do it. Um, had a lot of other stuff going on. So anytime you want to do that, like early morning, just let us know. So no, I'm just okay. I'm kidding. Yeah. Um, I think that pretty much does it. Do you guys have any questions? The primate itself, we were talking a little bit. I know it's not your yeah. area of expertise, but what's sort of the next step for the animal? Well, I hope uh, no matter what happens, he finds a good home. Um, currently, I understand he's in a great spot where uh, you know he's been given a large enclosure. He's being cared for really well. 
Um, it'll pretty much be up to the powers to be with the USDA and the, uh, the store itself on what the next step in their um, licensing is going to be. My final question for you, you've been with the department for quite a while. Yes. Have you seen anything as interesting as... No, this is my, this is my first time ever recovering a monkey from a prostitute. And it doesn't I've, happen every day. No, it doesn't. And I've, I've worked prostitution for eight and a half years, so this is my first. Sounds good. Anything you want to add? No. <laughs>